Banksy exhibition on there. That was that was cool. So a quick look in there. Didn't have a chance to stop. Really, I'd love to have gone around the actual exhibition. Didn't get chance time really. But anyway, in this video, I'm actually going to set myself a new project, and I'm actually going to challenge you at the same time. Um, now, it might be my struggle with projects is actually not getting bored of them after a couple of months if I'm not getting anything uh, exciting from it but I'm going to stick to this one I want you to stick to it as well what we're going to do is set our cameras to one meter maximum so you zone focusing at one meter so we're not auto focusing we're manually focusing and I'm on a 20 it's a 24 equivalent lens no 28 equivalent lens that's going to force me to get closer anyway right and it's going to give me lots of depth of field so i'm going to leave this set at one meter and the maximum distance i can be from any subject today is one meter now obviously if i get closer than one meter i'll have to focus because uh, you don't get any depth of field when you're really really close to something you look at look at really really close details on people what they're carrying what they're doing with their hands you know just the details that really really close it would force yourself to get close to the person you actually do see some really really interesting things even in an environment where you're perhaps not feeling very inspired and obviously the thing is when you're when you're that close you've got to have a, a really really small aperture so the least of them you're going to need is f8 f11 really ideally because as soon as you get close to something you start losing depth of field so that's a bit of a difficulty of course if they're moving and you're moving you've got to have a fast shutter speed so I've got this set to a thousandth of a second, the XT5 is on a thousandth of a second at f8. I've underexposed, well, what? Underexposed by two thirds of a stop. Um, because if you're going to get close to something and people have got dark clothes on, it's going to, like my shirt, it's going to wreck your exposure. So, underexposed by two thirds should compensate for that a little bit. But yeah, I'm going to spend the entire day at f8, a thousandth of a second when possible, maximum one meter, and uh, use the hashtag f8 one meter in your images and i'll keep a lookout from so the camera is set up as follows f8 on the 18 mil fuji i wish i'd left this hood at home in the van i forgot to take it off anyway um f8 my i'm on aperture priority which means my auto my at my iso and my shutter speed are in auto but the minimum shutter speed i'm going to have is going to be a thousand so i've got auto one set to a thousand minimum shutter speed there so no matter what happens I'm always going to be I'm always going to be nice and fast. Obviously, f8 is important, so we don't lose depth of field and whatnot. Um, but compensation is down by two thirds, as I said, just in case you're getting close to something that's dark. You don't want to overexpose it necessarily. And yeah, I've got my focus scale on the bottom there, so you can see I'm set to a meter. And uh, yeah, it's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. Of course, I'm on continuous high as well, because as people are going by, I want to I want to get that decisive moment as they go by. So. Uh, it's not really decisive who's spraying brain up there. <laughs> right, let's give it beans. Good thing about this challenge as well is it forces you to look in advance as far as you possibly can. So it gives you some notice to get your camera ready, switch it on if need be, Probably. or for me to start that video recording because I'm never going to film any of this. But yeah, just if you can keep an eye on as far as forward as you possibly can for things that are interested and then just sort of think, oh, okay, I like that, and just position yourself. It's, it is hard because you're just drawn to... Um, shopping bags and obviously we're, we're in a designer shopping haven you're, you're looking for gucci bags and all that sort of stuff but that feels a bit obvious and a bit kind of pointless and repeatable it's just an image that you can take again and again on this street oh look at that belt Let's take a picture of your belt. Don't just take a picture of your belt. Yes, so, sure. <laughs> no, sorry, you carry on. Natural is fine. There you are. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Have a good day. See, that was unique. <laughs> that guy there is definitely unique. <laughs> Great. Everybody's on their flipping mobile phones. Those two women there with their glasses on. Let's see if we can get that before I get ran over. Let's go over the side of the road. There's two women up crossing the road. Let's run over. Let's run over there. I think they're gonna come this way, so let's just just do this. I can still hear him yelling at me now. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Right, okay, that, that adds a spin to it, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I do quite like it actually. I do quite like it. I like that I know that it's at one meter, F8 and a thousand a second. I think that's uh, 
That's true, we have a little bit of <laughs> matching glasses. That's what I mean about looking ahead. We've seen those women from the other side of the road manage to get in front of them, cross over, and um, anticipate where we needed to walk in front of them. pre focus so the camera was locked in ready. I didn't have to worry about anything to do with the camera. I do really like the photograph, actually. It's cheered me up, because all I want is one photograph. Every time I go out, you, you're probably fed up hearing me saying this. Every time you go out, just get one picture you like. And I'm happy with that one, I think it was cool. This road, I came on the, I think this is all Oxford Street. And um, I came here a couple of months back, I did a one meter challenge here on a workshop. And in good light, everybody walking towards you, this road is absolutely fantastic. We're not getting any good light today though, so we'll still get some, as long as we fill in the frame with what we like, that's the important thing. No cropping, fill in the frame. So it's very obvious when we're looking at the photograph, what on earth the point of the photograph was. <laughs> I'm enjoying this now. I think I was in the wrong area for it. I thought Mayfair would be uh, really full of interesting, quirky, very well dressed people, but it just wasn't the case. So, this is actually very much more diverse, see loads of more interesting things. And it's actually really addictive because I've got my, my camera around my waist, and um, the amount of people that just walk by, just the hand interactions, like the couple there, see so the couple there, sort of linking arms, sort of thing, just close up, filling the frame, it's really interesting. So, it's a really, it's a, it's quite an addictive challenge actually i'm really enjoying it this girl there was sat opposite me in the uh, in the coffee shop i did i did get a shot of her lifting the yellow she was basically all in yellow but it was a bit too dark i don't think that came out anyway excuse the chocolate chops <laughs> right here's a massive tip for you if you can if you can anticipate where what sort of photograph you're going to get you keep the camera where it where it needs to be and sort of rest it on your shoulder so you like now I'm, I'm talking to you people have no way I could literally face anywhere people are thinking just talking to you no no one gives a shit about the cameras it's only when you lift the camera up as you're about to take a shot that people see it so if you see my last video where I interviewed Matt Chris the other guy in that video actually said the same thing so keeping your camera on your shoulder or around your waist if that's what you're doing is a massive uh, tip other than that a wide angle lens like this 18 mil I'm absolutely loving I wouldn't I struggled, I've tried this before exactly on this road with a 35mm equivalent on the X100V and I, I, it was far more difficult. I, my hit rate, because obviously you're not looking through the EVF, was far, far, far more difficult to get a, a decent shot in frame. So uh, with this lens, it's far more forgiving. And obviously, I'm going to have to crop some of them because it's so wide and it just you're not, you're not going to get it right in camera here. But yeah, it's um, the trick is to try and force yourself to get as close as possible and just enjoy it. I'm, uh, I'm normally really discerning with, with street photography and what images I take, but with this style of photography, I'm just enjoying walking around and going snap, 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 snap. A lot of crap is, go is going on this memory card, but I'm just really ripping enjoying it. Your camera like that, where we are now, People, especially me talking to you, people just don't give a shit, they don't even notice it. A bit weird actually. But yes, if you are enjoying this video, if you're getting anything from it, if you're enjoying the photographs, enjoying the content, you can help support the channel by downloading my latest scene. I'm on issue three at the time of recording this. These photographs hopefully are the, uh, are the start of issue four, which uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking, to, looking to start collating in the next couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, do check out, I'll put the link in the description, link up there in the corner wherever it goes. And if you do, um, download the digital zine you're hugely hugely supporting the channel so massive massive and i really am grateful for all the kind feedback i've had on the particularly la the last zine issue three got some of my favorite images in that magazine so i'm really really proud of that and as with every single zine there's a lot of information under each photograph so the backstory the mistakes how i could have improved each photograph that sort of thing so it's not just a picture book you, you do actually learn from my mistakes and uh, everything I everything I do in the in the uh, in the zine as well. So do check out F8 Digital Zine, and that's a huge huge support for the channel. Back to it. Do you know what I'm getting wrong here? I keep thinking, and I, I'm not. I, I think the biggest mistake I'm making is not taking enough photographs. I see a photograph. I see something happening. As it walks towards me, and I'm like, is it is it worth taking? Is it interesting enough? And as it goes past, I'm like, yes, I should have taken that, and I've, I've missed probably 20 shots just because I've been thinking.
got a cool shot then <laughs> and the lady just it started to rain the lady just chucked a what do you call it over a red but i was walking i didn't stop i just carried on walking thinking that yeah my shutter speed would save me but obviously i've hit my limit so i'm down to 350th of a second um so i i wouldn't imagine it's sharp because i was walking and stuff but yeah i still do like that photo That is me done. We're going to get back to Wales. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've just popped into Forston and Mason where Alan Shaller, if you don't follow Alan Shaller on Instagram, you need to. Um, he's got an exhibition in there. That was really, really cool. Had a coffee. Uh, took in, uh, nice to see his work in print as opposed to 2H Square on Instagram. Had a coffee, got chatting to a couple of guys in there as well. <laughs> Recreated one of his photographs. Um, at the bar <laughs> when we were there, that was quite good fun. But I've got to tell you, I've really enjoyed today. I was struggling the first two hours, I didn't think I was going to get anything, I probably still haven't. It's different because this style of photography is you don't know what you're going to get till you get back. Uh, but I've got that to look forward to. I might have fluked something, there's a lot of luck in this, isn't there? I don't know what to think of that shoot. It was uh, it was a damn good day. I really really enjoyed it, and it was my first time using the 18 mil on the Fuji, the new 18 mil. Incidentally, the 18 mil f/2 is definitely the better lens for street photography. Just uh, unless you particularly need 1.4, which you don't for street photography, the 18 mil f/2 is probably still the better option. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a, it was a school day. Let's put it that way. I'm looking back at the photographs. I'm looking back at the footage, and. I'm, I can see that I'm very clearly used to a 23mm Fuji lens still, um, which is the lens I part X for this one actually, the old 1.4. So that's a 35mm field of view, this is a 28 So I, I can definitely tell that I'm used to being, my feet are used to being the, the right distance for a 35mm and I'm not close enough. just outside a meter, a meter and a half, um, just shy of two meters, which is where I'm where I'm used to being. So a lot of the photographs needed to have been a lot closer. And yeah, I, there, was a, there was so many opportunities where people were walking towards me, I thought, is this a photograph? That's quite interesting, da da da. And then you're thinking about it and you're looking at your, with your eyes, you're thinking, is it a shot, is it a shot? And then you anticipate it and then it goes past and you go, yeah, I should have taken that, that would have been amazing. Um, and the, with this style of photography, you have to get rid of all that discipline, all of that um, control that normally I'm sort of holding back. Thinking, Is it interesting? I don't want to fill my car with crap. Um, and I feel like my photography standard drops when I take a million photographs and three of them are any good. But with this type of photography, you've literally got to do that. You've got to take so many more photographs and just accept that there's going to be a lot of junk but then at least afterwards you you know it's digital we're not shooting film are we so with this type of photography with the one meter challenge it's just a case of thinking about it because it's so close it happens so fast you might you know if, if it's a case of you've seen something in the distance thinking, oh that's cool when it comes close enough when the subject comes close enough, take the freaking photograph don't hesitate and um at 15 frames a second or whatever this is i i didn't have anywhere near enough photographs I didn't have any, I come back, I was only on the streets for three hours, I got there at 12, I had to leave at three, so I wasn't there long enough really. But in those three hours, I was hesitating so many, I passed a good 20 photograph opportunities that I that I, I, I was, I can't get it out of my head that, that you need to just take the damn photograph. So looking back at some of the video footage that I got, I was like, why didn't you just take them photographs? There was some, there was an element, close up, there was an element of interest there. So that was point one. Point two is that, we're zone focusing at a meter and with uh, if you understand what hyperfocal distance means if you're focusing focusing at infinity on something like an 18 mil or a 23 mil we can't really do it with a 50 mil full frame equivalent now so with a 28 mil a 35 mil hyperfocal distance at infinity will get you all the way to about three meters in front of the camera i did a video there where does it go there <laughs> i don't know where it goes um check out that video when we talk about zone focusing there now, with one meter challenge, your hyperfocal distance is so small that I bet I would have been better to focus at a meter and a half and 
the 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 hyperfocal distance would have covered a meter at, at, at f8 or f11 so you're better off focusing past what your subject's going to be and then the hyperfocal distance will cover that as opposed to focusing at a meter and something being just outside that meter it's just not going to work the other way around it only works coming towards you so what i should have done was gone to f8 focused at a meter just over a meter maybe a meter and a half and then, you know, still stuck to my one meter challenge, but at least that hyperfocal distance would have would have given me better results. Um, the other thing is, because I'm used to the 35 mil field of view, I'm, I thought I was closer than I was. And I know looking back at the pictures, because it's a 28 mil, they don't look that close. But it's a 28 mil, so it's 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 a wide angle, so they're not going to look that close. But because they don't look that close, it doesn't feel like I've got close enough in the subject to the subject. The pictures don't feel close enough, and that's the point of the one meter. It's when you look at the photographs, you're supposed to feel really, really part of the photograph. You're supposed to feel like you're in, you know, you're 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 almost uncomfortably close to something at some in some cases. So I, I failed massively there. I should have been a lot closer. And I think on the next time, I'm just going to be perhaps put the camera in electronic shutter so it's not making a sound. And then I can just walk around go da -da 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 -da, and, th and think less, take way more pictures and just be just enjoy it more because it's a really good, flipping good way of shooting. I wouldn't do it all the time. It's not my my it probably, you know, 20 percent of the way I approach street photography going on. But. I really just, if I'm, if I'm in an environment where I'm not feeling inspired, just looking for details. I've been doing it for the last couple of months and doing it on workshops when I've been teaching people. Just give them a one hour challenge. Focus your camera at one meter and then get really close to something, preferably on a wide angle if possible. Get really close. Because if, you, if you're walking around an area and you're not seeing the light, you're not seeing the environment, you're not seeing whatever it is you want, if you really do look closely at people's hands, what they're carrying, what they're doing with their hands, um, most people are doing something really interesting, especially with these fashion conscious people and stuff. So yeah, really good challenge. Really, really enjoyed it. Gutted I didn't take enough pictures, but it was a good fun day anyway, and I can't wait to do it again. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry the pictures suck. <laughs> I think the last one in the in the in the in the, um, Alan Shallows was it Mason Hamlin? Fortnite and Mason. Mason Hamlin's a piano. Fortnite and Fortnite and Mason. Um that, that was quite a nice photograph. Um, but yeah, it's not, not within a meter, is it? <laughs> but I hope you enjoy the photographs anyway. There was one or two that I really liked. It was a bit of fun and uh, yeah, can't wait to do it again. So yeah, do check out the magazine, check out F8 um, Digital Zine. You can download that now instantly. Issue three is fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with it. And thank you again for all the, all the kind feedback on that zine. It's been a huge, huge support. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.